Atlanta is a big city on the move. It's a modern metropolis that's stepping out. A major reason is the action of the annual Peach Bowl. clubs of Georgia and the city of Atlanta had the stage set for a giant extravaganza. Arizona State University arrived aboard the first jumbo jet ever chartered and personable Arizona Governor Jack Williams led his state's contingent. Arizona State coach Frank Cush preceded his powerful team that came to Atlanta with a 10-0 record. The Sun Devils were the nation's eighth-ranked team and confident of moving up in the polls after an impressive Peach Bowl victory. But another team came to Atlanta. The University of North Carolina was the underdog, but no one could convince them of that. Carolina coach Bill Dooley was all smiles because his team was determined to be the 1970 Peach Bowl champion. The Tar Heels established their presence right away and All-America running back Don McCauley had already generated some excitement. Sunday evening was a smorgasbord. The Atlanta American Motor Hotel hosted the first event of the Peach Bowl's wonderful week of fun and festivity. The Atlanta Chamber of Commerce sponsored the annual Players and Coaches Luncheon at the Marriott Motor Hotel. Thanks to the generosity of the Chamber, every player received an honorary Peach Bowl plaque. Popular Peach Bowl President Sim Manning presided at the Players Awards Banquet at the Marriott where a major feature was the Peach Bowl Queen competition. Attention was undivided. This year, Christine Mullins from Augusta, Georgia won the title. Bob Dickey, president of the National Peach Council, crowned the lovely 1970 Peach Bowl Queen and presented her a $500 college scholarship from the Peach Growers of Georgia. The queen showed her charm. Ms. Mullins had the honor of presenting every player with a custom-designed Peach Bowl watch. Georgia Lions Lighthouse President Willard Kimsey reminded everyone not to forget why the game was being played. Lighthouse Executive Director Jim Corbett added his wholehearted support. Peach Bowl Executive Director George Crumbly was busy at the lively Peach Bowl Ball. Georgia Governor-elect Jimmy Carter was one of the many dignitaries who attended the ball as the Royal Coach Motor Hotel came alive with music and dancing. This Tuesday night, everyone thoroughly enjoyed themselves. Suddenly, it was Wednesday, game day, and tension built. But kickoff was a few hours away. In the meantime, plenty was happening. Grady Stadium was the scene of the Peach Bowl Parade of Champions. Outstanding bands from all over Georgia and the South received awards for their contributions. Ladies were not left out of the 1970 Peach Bowl activities. A lovely champagne luncheon was held in their honor at the Regency Hyatt House.
Downtown Atlanta brightened up for the Peach Bowl Parade, headed by Grand Marshal Jimmy Carter. Parade Deputy Marshal was Arizona Senator Barry Goldwater. It had been a fast-moving week of activities, and much more was ahead. Thanks to the devoted efforts of the Georgia Lions Clubs, Atlanta had the honor of hosting the third annual Peach Bowl, a bowl that had broken all records in its first three years. It was also seen by millions of people across the country on 122 television stations. The Peach Bowl had arrived with tradition and national importance. The climactic event of the week was at hand. It was time for the game. A record 52,221 people from all over the country came to Grant Stadium in anticipation of another thrilling Peach Bowl classic. The pregame entertainment had all the color and choreography and sound of a Broadway show. Not since smashing Air Force 35-0 in the 1963 Gator Bowl had North Carolina traveled the bowl route. North Carolina coach Bill Dooley counted on his team scoring a lot of points, and with All-America running back Don McCauley, it could and would happen. Junior Paul Miller gave Carolina a big threat at quarterback. But Arizona State was schooled in victory. The Western Athletic Conference champion Sun Devils boasted a 16-game winning streak. Coach Frank Cush sought his 100th victory at Arizona State. Helping achieve it was a mod motorcyclist from Naples, Italy, quarterback Joe Spagnola. Top pro prospect J.D. Hill was his ace receiver. Zero hour was minutes away. The near-capacity crowd and a national television audience was ready for football action. But for many people, the Peach Bowl was more than the game, since proceeds went to site conservation and eye research efforts of the Georgia Lions Lighthouse for the Blind. This was the real significance of the Peach Bowl. All the hard work and effort that went into organizing the most successful Peach Bowl ever was about to be rewarded as this, the third annual Peach Bowl Classic, was underway. North Carolina's Bill Taylor had the honor. Arizona State's Steve Holden was on the other end. Many people doubted the strength of the Western Athletic Conference teams. For years, coveted postseason bowl invitations failed to reach Tempe, Arizona. After tonight, that mistake won't be repeated. Joe Spagnola was the top passer and J.D. Hill the premier receiver in the WAC for obvious reasons. Arizona State had a speed machine and sophomore Monroe Ely was just one wheel. The Sun Devils were the number one scoring team in the nation. Senior Bob Thomas added to that, and after its first series, Arizona State led 7-0. North Carolina had its own arsenal. The big weapon was tackle-busting Don McCauley, who broke O.J. Simpson's single-season rushing record. The comeback rule was a familiar one for North Carolina, but this time the Arizona State defense ruined the performance. Although only in the first quarter, Carolina coach Dooley knew he had to make some changes. Arizona State's offense was always a threat. Its passing attack was only part of it. Number 72, Flip Ray, anchored a veteran Carolina defense. 
After a shaky start, the Tar Heel defense tightened up. Arizona State was stopped. North Carolina had forced a mistake. Sun Devil coach Frank Cush didn't like the imperfection. The first period ended with the Carolina offense stalled. But Arizona State met the same fate and had to punt. Surprisingly, the game was shaping up as a defensive duel. Carolina looked for a break and put the pressure on punter Jim McCann. But the effort backfired, and Arizona State had a first down in Tar Heel territory. Bob Thomas was the main contributor to Arizona State's ground attack that averaged almost 300 yards a game. Thomas didn't start until the second game, and that was too soon for North Carolina. 33 yards later, Arizona State was on top, 14-0. During the season, Paul Miller took over the quarterback job and the Tar Heels roll. His strike to Ricky Lanier put them back in this game. Don McCauley was a compact that hit like a heavy. He was the best rusher in college football history, gaining a record 1,720 yards in a single season. When North Carolina needed yards, he got them. When it needed points, he got them too. His touchdown narrowed Arizona State's lead to a slim seven points. The harder it rained, the harder Carolina hit. Carolina coach Bill Dooley called Arizona State explosive. He was right. When a 9-3 sprinter like J.D. Hill gets the football, 67 yards fly by. Arizona State 21, North Carolina 7. It looked like the Sun Devils would run away with the game. Any hope of victory meant North Carolina had to mount an attack. Lewis Jolly knew it only too well, and he began the assault by adding 30 yards. From its own 45, Carolina had an uphill fight. Bucky Perry shortened the climb. On this play, North Carolina enjoyed the glamour of success and the anguish of despair. Tony Blanchard went 36 yards to close the gap to 21-14. But the Tar Heels received a severe blow. Quarterback Miller was knocked out of the game. North Carolina was down, but not out. The Tar Heels were fighting mad as Arizona State discovered. John Anderson recovered at the Sun Devil 21. In Carolina's last game of the regular season, Don McCauley put on a record-smashing show. He scored five touchdowns. His performance helped put the Tar Heels in the Peach Bowl. Now, he had them back in the game 21-20. North Carolina still trailed, but not for long. Lou Angelo set the stage with two minutes, 45 seconds left in the half. When things go wrong, they really go wrong. 
sophomore Mike Mansfield was the new North Carolina quarterback. Bucky Perry responded for 19 yards and a first down. North Carolina got a lift on this play when an Arizona State defender was too anxious. North Carolina needed points. Of course, Mr. Touchdown did his thing. Let's take another look at the play. The touchdown was a result of great blocking and Don McCauley's power. From out of nowhere, North Carolina had roared back. The Tar Heels entered the game as two touchdown underdogs, but looked like winners as they took a 26-21 lead into the locker room. In the excitement of the tremendous first half action, the downpour of freezing rain was ignored. Everybody's spirits were high. As the start of the second half approached, there was a change in the weather picture. To compound its troubles, Arizona State was running into terrible conditions. Just what the Sun Devils didn't need when they were behind. This half, Arizona State needed a spark. Arizona State's defense ranked seventh in the nation. It was rough. The Sun Devils stopped North Carolina cold. Carolina had the misfortune of giving up the football. The result, a 15-yard kick. The momentum had shifted between halves. Now the Tower Heels were cold. Arizona State unleashed its attack. First strike was Monroe Ely. Spagnola added his hand, and sophomore tight end Joe Petty did the rest. From the Carolina eight-yard line, Ely used his 9-5 speed. Arizona State was back in the lead, 28-26. North Carolina found the weather conditions treacherous. After only 18 seconds, Arizona State was again in control. It wasn't going to waste the opportunity. Sophomore Steve Holden showed signs of things to come. He stretched the Sun Devil margin to 34-26. The Tar Heels couldn't get going. Arizona State knocked them flat. Carolina had trouble with its kicking game all night. Steve Holden led the nation in punt returns. And he knew what to do when he got the ball. Arizona State was at the door again. Monroe Ely scored his second touchdown from the five 
and the Sun Devils led 41-26 at the end of the third quarter. Against the rugged Arizona State defense, North Carolina only gained 23 yards on the ground in the second half. A second half Carolina passing game sputtered. Don McCauley gained 143 yards and scored three touchdowns, but it was no salvation. Arizona State was billed as the fastest guns in the West. Neither the sloppy turf or the Tar Heel defense could holster the speed machine. Bob Thomas scored three touchdowns as the Sun Devil offense rolled up 48 points. For North Carolina, it had been a long second half. But the Tar Heels had played a fine game against an Arizona State team that proved itself wholly deserving of a sixth place national ranking. Arizona State end, Junior Ah Hu won the Smiley Johnson Outstanding Defensive Player Award. Born in Samoa and raised in Hawaii, Ah Yu was all football player. Another Sun Devil, sophomore Monroe Ely won the Clint Castleberry Outstanding Offensive Player Award. Ely was from North Carolina, but the speedster had no mercy on his home state. He was the game's leading rusher with 173 yards. Arizona State head coach Frank Cush accepted the winning team trophy and expressed how much the game meant to Arizona State. The Sun Devils proved their muscle was national caliber. It had been an outstanding third annual Peach Bowl Classic and the future held more. A fitting climax to the event was the presentation to a lucky fan of a brand new Buick Opel GT. Compliments of Vic and Claude Piano of Mislu Productions.